What does it mean when you can't see your picture? When the picture doesn't show up? <laughs> does anybody hear me? Yes, ma'am. So if you look beside the mute button that you know to use, to the right of it, you'll see a start video, and then that'll make you where you can see yourself. Now, okay. Now, there you go. <clears throat> So now we know you know where, where the mute button is, don't we? Yeah, my well, mine is, <laughs> it says mute all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we cleared that up yesterday. <laughs> I don't know, Miss Elaine. I think okay, some of so us. When I push, okay, when see? I push the participant, I see. Howard I'm Elaine mute. does not have a mute button on uh, her. All right, we're about ready to get started. Yes. Okay, we've got Elaine. Yes. Howard Nettles. I'm here, Mayor. John Milling. Present. Cheetos not here yet. I guess. I don't know if I've missed roll call, but I'm here. Uh, uh, Brian. Councilwoman Backus is here. I think she might, she's, I'm not sure if she can hear you, but she's here. I see her. Mr. Seeger's here. Sheila's here. I see Sheila. All right. So we're missing Mr. Seegers is all. All right. You ready to go and get started? I'd like to motion that we call this meeting to order. Okay. I second. All right. Thanks everybody for coming today. Uh, it's Tuesday for the City of Darlington uh, 2021 uh, budget work sessions. Uh, we met yesterday and meeting again today. Uh, hopefully we can finalize everything today. Um, appreciate everybody coming in on a rainy day. Hopefully we'll say a prayer and we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, dear Lord. Thank you for all the rain. Thank you for keeping us safe. Watch over and guide direct us in all we say and do, dear Lord. Give us the wisdom that we need to do things properly and uh, provide uh, necessary things that we need for our city. We love you in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right, uh, Howard, Garland. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. If you'll turn to page 10, we'll start with the legislative uh, branch. This would be the branch that encompasses mayor and council. So everyone, please turn to page uh, 10 for legislative. Okay. Your salary and wages are 40,258 for this year and 41,063 for next year. That includes 2% uh, adjustment. 
retirement fund fluctuates a bit because some of the council members are not on state retirement and others are. Um, I believe we have four that are on state and three that are off. Social Security goes up a little bit. Insurance and bonds is only 100 bucks. The tort insurance there has gone up some to 73.15. Under 215, that covers the traveling expenses for the annual uh, meeting in uh, July in Charleston. But I had sent out a text earlier today to council members and mayor that that meeting has been canceled due to COVID-19. So there will be no MASC annual meeting this year in Charleston. What the Municipal Association is going to do is to hold a virtual meeting on July the 16th. So please make a note of that in your calendars. The MASC will have a virtual meeting on July the 16th. They will send more details out for the agenda and uh, just uh, information for that session. So please note that the meeting in Charleston is canceled July 15th through 17th due to COVID-19, but they will have a virtual meeting for council members and mayor on July the 16th. Don't worry about any of the hotel reservations. Everything's going to be refunded back to us. So actually, it's going to be quite a, a savings, probably around $8,500 for the city with a, without having that expenditure. 221 is the mayor's cell phone. Howard, I have a question. Yes. yes. Just to kind of get myself oriented. The first column we ran into as we were going through things with Freddie last night, it sounded like First column is the budgeted amount. Second column was going to be, or was the column showing the money that had actually been spent this year? Second column. And I'm just money. wondering if, is that the way it is set up so that just for like the retirement fund at 267, we had budgeted $4,244 and we have spent three thousand four hundred and sixty three dollars is is that the way to read it yes sir that's the way to read it line one is the budgeted line two is the uh, actual expenditures through what date through the end of this year and some of those are estimates some of them aren't but as i was telling you earlier the retirement there are three council members that opted not to have retirement out taken out of their salaries and four that have do have state retirement taken out that's why that number is different. All right. Since we're not going to the um, convention and you were talking about a savings, how do we handle carryovers when we don't spend items in a particular budget? Where does that money go? We don't carry those items over usually, sir, unless there's a, a motion by a council member to do that. We zero everything out for the next year. Well, in theory, we should have money in the bank, shouldn't we? We do, yes, sir. Yes, we do. Well, where does that money that we actually have accumulated show up? And if you look we on make decisions about where we're going to spend it, if you'll look on, let me find this. You're kind of getting me off track here. I got to find the answer. You're holding some minute. Um. If you go to page number eight, general fund recap, page eight, general fund recap. See yes, where it, All right. See where it says the cash on hand? That's the cash on hand that we had on hand on July 1st, 2019, 1,178,944. Okay. So that's where that money goes. All right. At some point in time, do we get a chance to look at that and see how we can utilize the, the surplus on hand for these expensive projects we've got coming up? Uh, yes, sir, that's a possibility, but we won't know what cash we have on hand until July 1st. Right. So that, but yes, sir, but that was we had a million. We had a million one July 1 of 2019. Yes, sir. Okay. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it, it gives me a better understanding of we've we've got our budget, but we've also got some money that is left on hand that we will know effective July 1, and then we can start determining what we want to do with it, if anything. Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay. So uh, continuing on with the legislative breakdown, 
we were talking about the traveling expenses and the phone, uh, cell phone for the mayor. Uh, meals for the work sessions is something that we've added for next year because the council had said they wanted to have more work sessions and other operating expenses you see there are listed under 279. So your totals for uh, number 500, uh, 65,143 is what we project to be actually spent for this year and the cost for next year are 64,504. Are there any questions for legislative 500? If not, let's move on to Municipal Court 510, page 11. 101 under salary and wages. Council adopted 99,147. We've gone over that to 109,037. As we mentioned earlier, that's due to us using a um, associate judge that we have because we have conflict sometime with our current judge, Robert Stutz. If he, he has a defense, uh, he runs a, he's an attorney in Florence and sometimes there's a conflict when a, somebody comes before him in that court. Excuse me just a minute. So that's over by about $10,000. Insurance and bonds, 13,732. That's gonna go down a little bit next year because we were able to consolidate some savings for that line item. Tort insurance is 418. Workers comp is 615 and they're your retirement fund. That goes up a percentage for both um, state retirement for the regular retirement system and the police officer's retirement system. Social security is uh, listed there also. So your totals down at the bottom. 136.573 was uh, actually what we had adopted and we paid out 149.109. We estimate for next year, 139.909. That's for, again, for personnel services for municipal court. If you look under operating expenses, printing and office supplies, 2,200. We project $2,025. We've got 2,000 for next year. Postage costs are going to, from 1,000 to 1,300. We'll put 1,200 down. Phone costs were $40 below what we had budgeted. So we're gonna put that at 260. Maintenance and service contracts were uh, over by $5,000. We did consolidate some of the maintenance and service contracts. We did away with the Pitney Bowes machine for a considerable amount of savings. And we also went with uh, another copier company. It's gonna save us probably $110 a month. So we're gonna to hope to bring those costs in line with our line items for three and four. Machine and equipment expense, we only had $200 and we still leave that at 1,500. Employee training is for uh, conferences <clears throat> for the judge or for the clerk or the assistant clerk. Other operating expenses, 279 was 850. We're leaving that at 1,200. Jury fees, we're gonna put at 750. We had $310 in jury fees for this year. And that would have been higher, but a jury trial that we had, had uh, planned for this year, everything's been moved back to next year. Uh, due to COVID-19. I believe the uh, memo said that there won't be any, any court until July 12th. So that's that's the reason for that. Capital spending is gonna be in your next page on page 11. <clears throat> Furnitures and fixtures is uh, $700 for next year. Office machine, $700 for that next year. We haven't spent any out of either one of those. Your final totals for 510, 152.723. And we actually spent 166054. We budgeted for next year 155419, 155419. Any questions about 510? Has he been recusing recruis himself less lately? Um, not as much this, this calendar year as in, in 2019, but it was a considerable amount in 2019. I think we were able to work working out where it's the load is not as heavy on the associate judge this year. Thank you. Well, page 13, we have elections, which is 522.79. As you know, we had a council seat and three at-large seats up for election last year. Our projected costs were 10,000. We only spent 7,080. We have no elections planned for this year. So that's maybe one of the easiest things we look at all night. Any questions for 520 on page 13? Very good, thank you. 532.65, professional services. This is gonna be Kevin Etheridge and the Gardner Law Firm. You see we had budgeted 35, but his services have cost us 45 this year. We have 12,000 for the retainer, which we give him $1,000 a month in litigation of cases, it's 23,000. Um, I guess each of you know how much we utilized uh, Kevin Etheridge. I won't say anything about previous uh, attorneys, but Kevin attends all of our meetings 
in our work sessions. And so uh, we lean on him a good bit for uh, advice and consent on some things. And uh, we appreciate, or I do appreciate his service. So any questions about uh, legal operating expenses? Moving on to number 15, community promotions. This is 550-550. We have 55003 Community Cemetery. That's Darlington Memorial Cemetery, $200. The contingency funding, we've had 1750 spent out of that so far. That's money that's available to each council member if they want to have a fund a nonprofit within the city of Darlington. We've cut that down to 700 for next year, so that'll mean $100 is available for each council member or mayor to use as they see fit for a nonprofit in the city of Darlington. The Pine Center, 55011, we've cut by $1,000 to 4,000. Let me also note that we have $4,000 in the recreation budget, which is available for Pine Center also. So that's $4,000 from community promotions and $4,000 from recreation budget for uh, operating costs for the Pine Center. PDRTA. This is something that we expanded on last year where uh, previous mayor and council decided to add Saturday bus service. That's why those costs are up. So we provide bus service uh, Monday through Friday and also on Saturday. Um, if you want, I can uh, certainly have Don Strickham come to a council meeting and present the benefits of uh, the bus service. We have 45 different uh, stops in Darlington. They run usually from nine until five. Monday through Friday, and I think they run an abbreviated eight to 12 or nine to one route on Saturday. Our projected cost for PDRTA for next year are 15,850. The Lord Cares is uh, we have slated for $200. PD Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Assault, $200. Council on Aging, $200. Your totals for this year, 23,862, and for next year, 21,350. Do we have any questions about anything under 550? Moving on to page 16, accommodations tax. You see we have different uh, activities listed here. These are usually for events. Um, our A tax has been down because of the closure of the Darlington Motel. Um, they have been rehabbing those buildings for quite a while now. So our A tax has been off. You see the lower collections for this year. Uh, so far we have budgeted 2,000, 1,650 has been spent. Next year, we project them to go up slightly with the opening up that motel again, hopefully. And we've raised the uh, money for those different events. 700 for the Swift Ted Festival, the Race Parade, 700, Race Fest, 700. Darlington County uh, Cultural Realism Charm Incorporated, $700. And the Christmas Parade, they raised the cost of the floats by $50. So we raised that to 450 from 400. So your total's there. Uh, 1650 spent this year, 3250 budgeted for next year. Any questions about uh, ATAX? Howard, I've got a question. Just do we have any kind of report coming from these entities as to what they are doing with the funds that we are providing so that we, we kind of have some idea of what's taking place, how the money's being spent? Some yes and some no, sir. Um, I know the Sweet Potato, Festival's, Sweet Potato Festival is good about giving us a report. And I believe looking on the previous page that we get a report from RTA. PDRTA actually sends us an audit. Um, I'm not sure about other, uh, some of these other folks. Uh, I know we've had some solicitations from some other nonprofits, but usually unless they're based in Darlington City or Darlington County, we, uh, we usually try to just work with those folks that work here. Uh, well, that, can we ask for that going forward from each other? Yeah that we provide dollars for? Uh, yes. Any other questions? Next up is the uh, finance department, which is administrative. This is gonna be your uh, city manager. Your I guess, I apologize. Before we move forward, um, on the hospitalities, the accommodations and the community relations um, budgets, we previously in the past four years have been going and giving money for the race fest, for instance. Are we going to start reflecting that in the budget? Because it's, it's kind of repetitive. So we're, we're back now on the ATAX. Is that what you're asking? I mean, I don't know. If, I guess it would probably go under community promotions. But for instance, you know, every year we're um, 
we're donating towards that. I'm just wondering if we're going to start reflecting that in the budget, or is that just not reflected because they come to council? Well, I can I can answer that, yes, sir. Money that's requested to council that's, uh, let's say, $15,000 or $10,000 comes directly out of the hospitality tax account. So that is not reflect the hospital that hospitality budget is not reflected in accommodations tax or community promotions. And so the like the monies that we gave last year, it was uh, $5,000 for the Veterans Memorial, $10,000 for the Veterans Memorial, um, I'm sorry, 5,000 for the Cotton Museum Memorial, 10,000 for the Veterans Memorial, 5,000 for the Sweet Potato Festival and 15,000 for Freedom Fest. That all came out of the hospitality tax collections account. Is there nowhere that we could reflect it or should we start reflecting it for the future so that at least the community knows where we're spending our funds? Um, Lisa Rock and I have researched that a bit. Um, maybe it would be a topic for a work session because um, I hate to get too much off of course tonight, but what we would, what we had been looking at doing was taking a chunk of hospitality money that's collected each year and budgeting that for some of those requests, whatever that amount would be that council would decide on. And that would be independent of community promotions or ATACs. So that's just a thought. Um, certainly what we could do is put out a request for uh, any event that's held in, in the city. If they wanted to receive funding from the hospitality tax account, you could look at that and judge it yourselves, or you could assign a committee as other towns do or, or Darlington County does to assign that funding. And then you vote on the request from the committee. I don't know if we have enough excess funds in that to start soliciting, um, you know, grant opportunities through that. I want to kind of keep it tight and use it on hard, you know, hardscapes, actual parks and playgrounds right now, minus the projects that we are supporting. But that, that, but that, that would be an idea there. But if you, uh, it's, it's nothing that's hard and fast is, is to how we do that. We just have always taken those larger requests and taking them out directly out of the hospitality tax collections account. I understand. I just didn't know if we could reflect it anywhere so that we could show what we've done in the previous you know, year. Uh, we, the auditor asked us several years ago to take the hospitality tax account out of the regular budget because they felt like we were using it to balance the budget. So that's why it's not reflected in the regular budget. Gotcha. Understood. Thank you for your time. Um, finance department is next. And that's the uh, on page 17, the city manager, our esteemed uh, court treasurer, our assistant court treasurer, and uh, Lacey, who does our business license and hospitality tax collections. Your salary and wages are 279595 for this year. A 2% increase to next year makes it 285187 Your insurance and bonds for four employees are 25548 Tort insurance is 1285 up from 1028 Workers' comp is down a little bit to 890 The retirement fund, again, going up 1% from one year to the next reflects a rate increase of uh, close to $4,000. Social Security is around $21,000, almost $22,000 for 2020-2021. So your 2019-2020 total is 372-212. 2020-2021 is 381-954. Operating expenses, you have your printing and office supplies. At uh, 9,000, we went to 11,500, so we've budgeted 11,000 for next year. Postage, I believe that was an increase but they did a good job of holding those costs down this year. We're raising that to 20 or lowering that, pardon me, to 2750. Membership dues at 100, auto operating expense at 275. Our phone has gone up some to 2322, so we put that at 2335. Maintenance and service contracts, we spent 14021 out of 16. We're raising that to 20 for next year. Building and equipment insurance is $122. Employee training, we have slated a a thousand that's not been spent, but we have 500 budgeted for next year on page 18. Professional services, again, that's the audits that we mostly charge to there under 380 or under 265, 31,732. We have budgeted 15,000 for next year. Under capital, I'm sorry, the totals there for O&E, we had budgeted 47,481. We spent 62,097, budgeted for next year 51,807. Under capital outlay, Furniture and fixtures, $1,000, nothing spent. So we have 800 for next year. Machines and equipment, we spent 988. We have 800 budgeted for next year. So your totals under capital outlay, $988. 
out of 2,000 and 1,600 budgeted for next year. Your totals for that department for 2019-2020, actually spent 435,297, budgeted for next year 435,361. Any questions about 570? Hey, Howard, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Sigurds. Member Smillen. I've got um, just a general information question on 570. It sounds like that it covers the salaries of the people who work inside the main administrative building. But if there is physical work that needs to be done to that building, an office needs to be painted, the restrooms in that building need to be rehabbed. Where does that show up within the, within the budget? Is there a separate or is where is it? I'm just wondering, things like that have to be paid for. Yes, sir, that comes up under the next uh, uh, department under public buildings. Okay. And Howard, my, my question was on item two, 226. If we had um, for 2019, 2020, a 16,000, 16, then the actual was 14 and we're gearing up to a 20,000, why the disparity between 16 and 20 when there was a decrease in the actual? That's a good question, and I don't have the answer right off the bat. I'll have to find it for you tomorrow. I'm sorry. Um, some things are right on the tip of my tongue. And that's that is not. Um, okay. I'm, sure, I'm sure there was a reason why I did it at the time. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry. All right, um, Howard. My question is uh, on four of these. On uh, number one hundred one for wages and salaries, um, who all does that include? I mean, everybody. That would be that would be myself the clerk treasurer, the assistant clerk treasurer, and um, the person who handles the business license and hospitality tax, four of us. Okay, and then uh, maintenance and service number 226, as they asked about. Uh, yes, sir. What, what is the maintenance and service contract? So who do you have contracts with? That's, that's going to be our... Uh, our copier contracts, that's going to be uh, the termite letter for uh, that main building for City Hall. And copier, um, copier was under something earlier on the other one. That's, that's, that's another department. They have a different cop, they have a cop, they have a separate copier for the, um, for the clerk of court. The, for, yeah. A copier contract or what else? Um, I believe, let's see, I'd mentioned it was the, uh, the termite letter uh, I think we paid for a Time Warner cable out of that for the different, uh, for the uh, Roadrunner services. I'm sorry, it's not Time Warner anymore. It's called Spectrum Cable. Uh, anything else that may come uh, under, let's say, like the uh, security cost for the alarm on the, on the administration building, those are things that come out of that line item. And then number 265, professional services. What is that? That's for the audit. We've had three audits done in the last uh, 13 months. That's all, that's all audits? Uh, mostly, yes, sir. Okay. And like later, if we, want, if we want to get all the line items for 226 to see where, where the $16,000 is going and so forth, I mean, is there a way to get that? Yes, there is. Uh, you'd simply say, uh, you can call Ms. Prison or myself and say, I, uh, I would like to print out a 570-226 for budget year 2019-2020. Or uh, Ms. Prison, Mr. Garland, I'd like to print out a 570-265 for 2019-2020. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We just go ahead and have that on record as asking for that now. That's what I was going to say. Rather than make a phone call, we're all together. Let's That's just right. It. Sure. Absolutely. Um, Sure. I mean, those. I mean, all I'm all I'm looking at is those are those are big numbers, and we just kind of fly them by them, and I sure don't want the public to think that I'm just going, hey, oh yeah, I, yeah. I don't want to be the Bob and doll. Um, you know, those That's why things I brought it could, up, Mayor. <laughs> those things are can be looked at clearly to see if we're doing the doing the best that we can with that. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Well, with that said, Howard, there's one other line I would like to have a breakdown of, but I need to find it on this report and I'll, um, I'll send it to you. 
You say you're gonna, you want to send it to me now? Or you want to ask for it now? Or sorry. Well, I found it in the report first. It was earlier. It was yesterday. One of the lines we went over yesterday. But when I find it, I'll, I'll um send it to you. Or I'll send okay. it to. I tell okay. you what it is. It's eight oh one. If you go back to page five, it's eight oh one. Page five. Page five, eight oh one, non departmental. We spent fifty four thousand dollars in that department, so I'd like to have a breakdown of that. Miss Pridgen, I think I said oh one two seven nine. If she's uh, listening, eight oh one two seven nine. It's on page five. That's the one you're reading off of, right? Um, yes, ma'am. I think eight oh one two seven two also. Okay. And that's right. the one I think Howard you told us was like. I know you just kind of gave a brief overview. That was like uh, internal accounting, gym fees, city employee cookouts, those kinds of things, correct? It is. Uh, uh, flowers for funerals. It's on page 52 if you'd like to look. Um, if you want okay. to look through it. It's on page 52. Okay. So you see you've got... Um, Insurance and bonds, tort insurance, membership dues for the Municipal Association, professional services, special contracts, which is going to include um, uh, the fitness world, and also Miss Kim Vinson, and also, I believe, psychiatric services that we have with a local company for those that want counseling. And then 279 is going to be a special occasions, employee supper, or anything that we can't charge directly to a department. For example, the one that she's asking for, or, or any of them, would they all be broken down more to show? Two seven two would two seven two would be broken down, or two seven nine would be broken down. Or two sixty two. Oh, good. Thank you. Okay, ma'am, does that help any? Yeah, that's fine. How? Okay, very good. So we can we. Uh, Go to 580 now, which is public buildings. 580 is public buildings on page 19. This is the department that uh, JJ works out of. You see salaries and wages, 29,256. Insurance and bonds is 69,50. Tort insurance, 206. Workers comp, 700. Retirement fund, 45. 52 for this year, Social Security 2238. If you include increases uh, for next year for 2%, um, the insurance has gone down slightly. Uh, tort insurance has um, gone up some. Workers' comp remains the same. Retirement fund has gone up. Social Security has gone up a little bit. So the totals last year 43,902 or this coming year 44,614. Operating expenses. 217 auto, which is the truck that uh, JJ has, $560. Electricity, water, and gas, that's going to be $220. I'm sorry, uh, for, it's uh, line 220, 33043, and we have budget for next year, 33000 The phone uh, is 479, so we put 480 for next year. Maintenance and service contracts, 560, we've got 1800 budgeted for next year, down from 2500 Machinery and equipment expense, that's only got $9 spent out of that. Um, building repair, 1500, uh, 1200 for next year. Electrical lighting supplies, $45 were spent. We have 200 for next year. Uniforms, we spent over spent for that 685, so we put 685 down for next year. Cleaning and sanitation supplies, we went over there because of the, uh, the COVID-19. And so we spent up to 3830 and we put 4,000 on that for next year. Over on page 20, the general obligation bond payment. This is the bond payment that we have for all the roofs that we had repaired in 2017 and 2018. This is uh, will be the third payment coming up, $123,580. How many One, payments for all that? I'm sorry? How many payments for, is that for? This, this is going to be for the, this will be the third payment out of, of, of 10 on that bond. It was a million dollar bond that we uh, did to redo all of our roofs, including all of our gyms and all of our municipal buildings. So that payment, third of 10 is 123,580. 
These Howard. Were, sorry. Howard John Milling. I've just got a question. We've got a bond payment there of 123.9. When we were going through Freddie's department last night, we had a bond payment of 181. When we get to, I think it's stormwater, we've got a bond payment of 180. We had talked previously about looking at refinancing some of these outstanding bonds to see what kind of savings we could achieve. I hadn't heard anything further about that. So what's the status on looking at to saving I money on, on these bond payments? I happen to have a sheet on that, sir. Um, some of these bonds have a payment penalty do um, the uh, water system bond is callable in in whole or any payment date uh, at 100, 101% of par plus accrued interest. So in other words, we'd have to pay 1% over whatever the actual is left on the bond. And that's, for, that's during the first five years or something. I'm just wondering what the status is for, for these various bonds. Some, well, some I, may I, have it, some may not. But my question would be, where are we in looking at whether we can successfully do it, whether it will save us money, even if there's a 1% or what the story is on that so that as we're building these budgets, we know whether or not we can actually squeeze a little bit more money from the department if we can do the bond um, refinance. Don't know that we can, but it just seems like it'd be good to know that when you're going into a budget to know what your your bond payments are going to be, yes, what sir. They we, have to be. we looked at that um, with uh, our bond attorney Ben Ziegler within the last six weeks. Everything was put on hold, due, though, due to the the fee in lieu of tax agreement, which uh, we signed recently for Project Peach, and those numbers are being assessed right now as to how that's going to affect all the all the bonding. Um, we well, had. Uh, those fee and lieu will come in and we'll have that money, but we still got the issue of whether or not we can save money on the bonds or the fee and lieu would not affect the bond payments, would they? Uh, it, it, down the road, it could, sir. It just depends on when the actual um, fee and lieu of taxes is gonna take effect. We're still waiting to get some type of opinion as to when those bond, when the um, fee and lieu of tax payment is gonna be credited to for the, for the it won't be this year or next year. We're hoping it's going to be 2022. Um, as far okay, as well, the, for my request, I'd like to know for these bonds whether or not there's any savings that can be made by refinancing the bonds, uh, which I guess would occur now in the 2021 fiscal year, just to see if we can pick up some money. We, uh, looked at that in March and according to Ben at that time with the fluctuation of the interest rates it was a very unstable time because of uh, COVID-19. He did not actually give us a, a discernible opinion other than things that we need to talk about in executive session as it relates to water sewer department. Um, I don't feel comfortable talking about it on uh, a virtual meeting. So let's, let's then make arrangements to get that information so it can be made available to us when we next meet uh, and can go into executive session. Some right. of it may be. And we need we need to meet in executive session to go over the uh, five lot agreement for Project Peach because that information has been, uh, we've had it for about a month now. I just uh, don't, wanna, don't want the numbers to get out with, without y'all knowing about it in person. I, I, again, I just don't feel comfortable with the format for sharing a lot of this information. All right, well, that's Project Peach, but we still, the numbers on refinancing, I mean, I've read them in the paper for other communities, refinancing and saving money. So there's nothing really about executive session for the refinancing. Yes, yes, there is, sir, because the bond attorney had an opinion um, about water sewer department and I, I just don't, I mean, I can't speak for it. Okay. Him. I just don't feel comfortable talking again. Again, that's that's saying, fine. If, if he's got an opinion about whether or not something can or can't be done, that's legal advice. Uh, for those where it's just a matter of figuring out whether we can save money, not whether or not 
we can legally do it, it might be helpful to have him send you something with the opinion as to whether or not it's executive session or open session. Okay, yes, sir. Oh, we were looking at number uh, 250, general obligation bond payment. That's 123,580. Vehicle insurance is 615, that's JJ's car. Building insurance, 12,283. That's an increase from 10,700. The LED bond payment, those are for our interior lights for all of our municipal buildings. And that's gonna be $29,865. Uh, we had a considerable savings on that. I think most of you are, are aware of that. I'd be glad to elaborate any on that if you wish. So the totals for the operating expenses are $205,647, which is slightly under budget of 205883. Next year, we have budgeted 208828. Capital outlay, building and fixed equipment. Building and fixed equipment. 83.69 we had budgeted, but we spent 15.877. So Mr. Milling, that's some of the items that you were talking about there, right. building and fixed equipment. Um, we have budgeted for next year, 6,000 furniture and fixtures. We didn't spend anything this year. We have budgeted 1,200 for next year. 388, which is where we uh, put the money that we had for the millage increase for paving our city owned streets. We have 64.9 budgeted, 3,500 has been spent out of that account. So it leaves us with 61.677. If you want to, um, we can certainly put out the bid for some of these smaller streets to be done or for one large street, but we're not gonna get much done for the amount of money that we had added to the millage, which was around $57,000. So I'd be interested in y'all's opinions on whether you want to do several small streets or one large street amongst our city owned uh, uh, streets there. Is the thirty five hundred added to something to give us the sixty one thousand, or should we have sixty four nine less thirty five hundred plus sixty one thousand? Uh, what's left over we haven't spent yet is going to be around sixty one six seven seven. Um, the math may may not may not. All right, so the sixty the sixty one six seven seven is simply mo the leftover money. It's not any new money that we're. No, sir, I'm sorry that. Look, I'm, I'm getting my head spinning a little bit here. I'm sorry. All right. 3,500 is what we spent this year. 61,677 is budgeted for next year. Those, that's, so that uh, would, would that in theory give us 120,000 for next year? In, if you wanted to carry over the amount that we haven't spent from, yes, from this year, yes, sir, it would. If, but you'd have to vote to do that, to carry it over. Okay. If we were to carry it over like that, then we would be able to pay for the projects we originally said we were going to do last year. Versus That's correct. the game plan. That's correct. We also have a large paving project coming up with the East Broad Street whenever that sewer project is done. So it may pay to bid that out along with some of our smaller streets and get a better deal because the paving project for East Broad Street could be north of $150,000 or more. It could be as much as a quarter million. I uh, just don't know what the DOT specs are going to be for that street as to how much asphalt we have to put down and uh, how much impaction has to be. So we might be able to, to get a better deal if we include East Broad Street with some of our city owned streets. Just a thought. It's a good thought. Um, public buildings 580, let me give you your final totals here. We had budgeted 325,054. We spent 268,926, budgeted next year 322,319. Any questions about um, 580? Well, folks, I'm going to hand it off to the capable hands of Lisa Rock for the Planning and Beautification Department. And I'm going to put my uh, microphone on mute. Thank you. All right. Can everybody hear me? Yes, ma'am. OK. I just wanted to make sure before I started. Um, this is on page 22, and if you're looking at your screen, I've got it up so you can see it. Um, salaries just has the 2% increase. In my department, I have myself, and there previously was a full-time person who was doing the beautification work, 
Um, they were transferred over to recreation and now we have two part-time people that are doing that job, which helps us on the insurance side of this part of the budget. You'll see here, you've got uh, 12,278 spent and next year is only gonna be 6,602. Can we, question, can we question that now? Is it best to wait later on that? Uh, it's up to you. Well, I'm not in agreement with the two part-time people um, because one of them's not showed up to my understanding and the other one shows up here and there. Um, <laughs> and I kind of get tired of going by and buying cheeseburgers and crackers and stuff for all the people that are doing volunteer work on the side of the road. So I think that, that area needs to be addressed strongly. I agree with that completely Look with Curtis. I'll address it further when I get uh, further in the. Thank you. All right. Um, workers comp, retirement, social security. Um, so you see we saved just a little bit of money there. Um, operating expenses, printing and office supplies were down a little bit. Um, so we've cut that down. Um, postage went up a lot. Uh, and that is partially because we are legally required to send a certain number of certified notices. Uh, if we have a zoning change request, everybody whose property touches those, uh, that property that wants a request has to get a certified letter. And that costs you about seven bucks per letter. Um, we had probably, I think it was three or four, maybe even five zoning change requests. And if it was in a place where a lot of pieces a lot of parcels touched it, that was more mail. Um, and of course, we just, you'd have to let people know what's going on. Um, so we don't really have a whole lot of options on that one. Um, anytime we have to reschedule a meeting, um, Historic Landmark Commission, when they have a certificate of appropriateness application, that is another situation where we have to send um, certified mail out to all the property owners that are contiguous. Uh, say, and of course, we did send some extra mail out for the uh, lighting ordinance update to the businesses so that they were made aware of the changes. Auto operating expense, that's gone up a little. And uh, this is partially how we've uh, readjusted the schedule with the individuals. Um, I felt like with the one person coming in, uh, we kind of changed up the duties to have the, when they come in, uh, to check all the spots for big trash or big problems, um, rather than um, just going through, you know, one day do this spot, next day do this spot, next day do this spot. Well, you may, you know, today's day might be the Rose Garden, but if you drive down Cashville Ferry, there's a big limb down or there's somebody's run into a signpost and we need to address that. And so uh, that's why I've kind of changed that around. And that's sort of reflected here in the auto operating expense. Um, it has worked to some degree uh, to reduce the amount of litter in some of the areas. Um, one of the areas that we've uh, taken up on Chalmers Street near where the storm water project was done, we planted a few trees in the green space. Um, and you know, just that is one of the spots that they check for trash and things like that. And they've they've notably collected less trash in those spaces just because they see somebody coming by every few days looking for making sure it's cleaned up. Um, telephone maintenance service contracts, uh, advertising. This is um, a big part of the budget that. Uh, you know, we can always use more advertising. Uh, you can't advertise enough. Um, unfortunately uh, for me uh, and for us, there's a certain amount of legal, legally required advertising. So every year we have a notice that goes out in the paper um, saying when these meetings are being held. Um, anytime we add a meeting or a work session, if there's enough time, it's gotta go in the paper. Um, Obviously there's some exceptions for emergency meetings and that sort of thing. And if your time is short, you can just notify the media if it's like a 24 hour window or something. Um, but there are a lot of things that do have to be printed in the paper, water quality report. Um, there, there's just a lot of different things. Basically this year um, and, and next year, 
Uh, we've spent, you know, around four thousand dollars on legally required ads. So, uh, just to give you a, a sense of how much money that that takes up. Quick, quick question on that: If the newspaper were, I think they've been sold, but if they were to have closed, then how would you? Uh, if they had closed, we would have to go with the next paper of record, um, which would have been the Hartsville Messenger, uh, which is considerably more expensive, or the Morning News. Um, if there are some, occasionally we'll get to a point where we are not on schedule with because the news and press is once a week. Um, sometimes we'll have to run in the morning news, um, depending on how things occurred and when we have to have it posted. Uh, and occasionally we will have to run something in the morning news that is probably twice as expensive. So it would have really hurt our budget considerably if news and press had closed because you're talking instead of spending three or four thousand dollars for legal ads, you would have spent, you know, seven or eight and half your budget would have been eaten up by just things that you have to do. All right. Um, other things that we put in advertising, um, any kind of radio uh, for events, uh, race week. Um, also in here are some good faith things like the congratulations graduate type things uh, and also the water bill inserts. Um, so the water bill inserts come out of this line item um, and it's, we've kept it to one page to keep the postage from changing um, because they, the folks that do the uh, water bill say you can put one sheet and print it on one side and they'll, they insert it and everything and print it for you. Um, and it's the same postage amount. So, um, but I think that that has really, I've gotten a lot of feedback from the water bill inserts um, in terms of events and in terms of uh, things like this, where we do need to get uh, notice about the changes in the budget to every customer and that's one way to ensure that every customer did get a notice. Whether they looked at it or not, debatable, but they were notified. Um, and we looked at, we brought it up, have you looked at uh, adding the insert for an advertisement? We have not discussed that. Um, we'd have to have a formal policy, I think, <coughs> on that to decide how we would um, charge everyone because I'm certain that um, you can get into a lot of sticky situations um, with that. And of course, our deadline is um, somewhat, somewhat ridiculous because it's the 15th to the 20th I have to have for the thing coming out, you know, on the first of the following month. So like for June's insert, they've already got that file because I already had to send it to them today. So what I'm saying is, is that if you've got a restaurant, um, six restaurants that you could put on one sheet of paper and they're all agreeing to do it for six months and you're already there for six months, what's going to be on the insert? Can you find out what it would cost to add that insert in there? And then we can determine to add a second page you're saying, or a like a second page, I guess. And then, um, uh, that page would just be for advertisement. And then at that point, if it, let's say it costs $500 a month to add it, then we know that that sheet will cost us $500. We've got to sell it for more than $500 for the advertisement. And it could be on a six month or 12 month contract with people to, to be on there, to bring revenue back into the farm. We certainly could look at that. Um, it just depends and Howard, on Howard the Mills, I think you said you're doing that in other locations. Is that correct? Howard? Genesis does that. We'll certainly yes, have we, we, we sometimes do uh, inserts with the water bills and other uh, areas that we service. So, you know, we, we work out a rate with them. They put it in there for us. And we pay for the printing. So it's very doable and it hits quite a few people. Anyone who gets a water bill basically gets gets one. Yeah, correct. And it, could be, like I said, it could be where you just do it individually with one company or we just put a sheet in there and it's, it's promoted out to five or six, however many people we can put on that sheet. Right, and Lisa, I'll be glad to help you if I can, there's anything I can land my to. limited knowledge Well, on. I think um, if we decide to go forward on that, um, I'm gonna need to bring a, a schedule of some kind of rules um, as far as how, how we would determine who can and can't be on that advertisement. 
Um, well, I think the first rule of thumb is to, the first thing is to find it, out if it's doable and how how feasible it is, and then it's certainly to, doable. To your ways. Uh, it's just a matter of how much it costs and if people are willing to pay that much. Right. So, so the first thing I would say is just if you can find out what it would cost to add another sheet in, then we can go from there. We certainly can do that. Thank you. All right. Um, so that's advertising. Uh, Vehicle insurance went up a little bit. Employee training, uh, we've cut that down. Um, this year, there was a couple of extra expenses. Part of that was the Economic Development Institute that I went to. The DDRA paid for the, um, the actual cost of the class and the city paid for the some of the travel expenses. Um, and that's reflected here. And obviously, since I've graduated that program, that's uh, over. Uh, board and commission training, there are several boards and commissions where commission members are supposed to have training. Um, some of that uh, can be done at the COG. Uh, sometimes we will have a meal to encourage commission members to attend. Um, and it, we haven't obviously been able to have any such meetings thanks to COVID because we generally kind of start doing that in the spring. Um, but that's usually around what we spend. Um, professional services is next. This, um, there's a lot of stuff that gets put in here. Uh, flags, sort of random, but it has to go somewhere. Replacing all the flags on the square, the flags at City Hall, the flags down at, um, in front of the Chevrolet place. Um, all those flag replacements are coming through this uh, line item, any kind of web service or thing like that. Uh, some of those come through this. Next year, I'm proposing um, in this 20,000 to use portion of this funds for archive social, which is uh, to help us be more compliant with FOIA. And it will take all the data from all of the city Facebook po pages and it will store it because right now, Somebody can request that data and it may or may not be available because Facebook just kind of randomly deletes stuff when it feels like it. Um, same thing with Twitter and these other account, uh, these other uh, entities because they're third parties. Um, they don't really want to have all that stuff sitting on their server. Um, so, and of course this will, this service specifically will also cover changes and edits. So if you go on Facebook and somebody makes a comment um, and it's, um, I don't delete anything unless it has cuss words in it. And I haven't had to do that. Um, and of course I screenshot it before. But if you were to do that, somebody put some cuss words on the, as a comment on the city's Facebook page. I delete it. If I delete it and it's not there, somebody says, well, I know I posted. I want a copy of that what was posted, what was deleted. Well, currently, if I don't take a screenshot of it, that doesn't exist. Um, this service and program will make it searchable um, and you know where we can come up with these things. And that costs us, that's only a cost of about $2,400. Um, so to avoid any kind of potential drama, I think that's worth it. Um, also in this, in this section, um, PDRTA shuttle, um, we contracted with PDRTA to shuttle during race week um, to try and get some of the folks that are out at the track to come downtown for events and for uh, things like that and to eat in our restaurants. And so we get more benefit from the folks being at the race. Um, I'm proposing doing that more often um, for race uh, Race Fest downtown, as well as the downtown concert, um, and maybe, uh, you know, sometime, another time if we need to, um, just to have that in there. Also in here goes signage. Uh, when we have zoning changes and things like that, you have to have the items posted and the date and the time posted on the site. Um, and surprisingly, people steal those signs um, I don't know what you do with a zoning sign, uh, but uh, they get stolen quite frequently. I usually order 
for one piece of property that doesn't face but one street, I usually order two or three signs because granted, uh, I, some for some reason, people think that they're fun to steal. Um, also out of this line item, um, for Race Fest, um, we, our contribution, um, we also rent the stage from City of Hartsville for the band that night and pay for the insurance on that. So, and that's about $1,200. And of course that's dependent on what the insurance costs. All right, um, next we have um, 272. Uh, downtown master 269 downtown master lease that was discussed yesterday that's the rent we pay for the retail spaces downtown um, where the chamber our pat um, the mcclellan building the hill building um, and the coleman building um, website that's where, that's where we pay lease to the company that doesn't pay us back correct correct um, website maintenance, we project that going up a little bit. We are working on the new website. Oh, it should oh, be. I'm sorry, I don't interrupt you again. I don't, I don't, no problem. That, that strongly needs to be addressed, Howard. We need to definitely uh, address paying somebody for years and they're not paying us. Um, <laughs> uh, the, whole, the whole situation needs to be addressed. I would like that publicly to be known. Um, one, one caution um, or just some food for thought with that. Um, just something to think about. Uh, if we were to somehow work out a deal where we did not have any control over those retail spaces anymore. Um, and I hate to put these bad scenarios out there, but I try and think of all the, what could happen. Um, you're talking about, they can, they're going to raise the rent because you pretty much know it's a, it's a, you know, it's a private entity. It's trying to make money. Um, so you, you may be talking about businesses shutting down and you may be talking about businesses, buildings being empty. And if, when we get 17 years down the road and get handed back all those buildings, if they're empty for 17 years, that that's not going to, they're not going to be in good shape. No, I mean, I understand I'm just that throwing that out there. The, just the for situation knowledge. from the way I see it right this moment, it's like the building that I have for, for my gym at the, I owe Darlington County Bank for that money. And if I went uh, seven, 10 years and only paid for three out of the 10 years and um, just collected the money, didn't have to pay anything. And then at the end of the term, I just handed the bill back 20 or 30 years later uh, and I kept all that money, I would be done pretty good. Um, but that somewhere along the line, they would, I would think there should be some penalties for them for not paying that. Um, is what I'm saying is I don't oh, know. I totally agree. I, I totally agree. Um, I just like don't know the details of that agreement <laughs> to tell you what those penalties could be. And then, and then you find out that they were, we're paying their water bill too, and they were paying them rents, and, um, and just I think there's a big there's a big red flag there that needs to be strongly addressed. Is what I'm asking. That seems like one of those things that Kevin Etheridge can take a look at the master leases and look at finding ways that we can benefit ourselves somewhat. Yes, yes sir. I, I, it's probably over my head. I'm sure that yeah, somebody. Uh... Well, it, it, and Howard and I briefly talked about it this morning. Uh, we knew we didn't have time to address it in time for uh, tonight's uh, meeting, but uh, we will uh, take a look at it. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, 271 website maintenance. We expect that to go up a little bit. Currently, we are working with Asset Technology Group um, to do an updated website, it will be cityofdarlington.com to match everybody's city email addresses um, so that we look much more professional. Um, and the current website of darlingtonsconline.com, we will still maintain um, that name. So if you type it in and you've got it saved as that, it will just redirect to the new site. Um, and we hope to have that going live sometime here in the next couple of weeks. Um, and you'll know in your email, I sent y'all a bio uh, questions so that we can kind of expand on what, what information we have on the website. Um, when, when do you need us to respond and send you a picture? Uh, probably in the next week or two. Thank you. All 
right. Um, 272 beautif beautification flower pots. This is the supplies for the staff uh, that do the beautification work. And when I say the beautification work, here are the areas that we're talking about um, so that we're all on the same page. Um, you know, the, we're talking about the entrances to the city. So where we have the big welcome signs with the brick pillars um, in front of Horizon, in front of the Chevrolet place where there's those flag poles, flag poles and trees, um, the gas pillars in front of Walmart, the gas pillars over by um, Cashua Ferry and Pocket Road, the welcome sign in front of McLeod, the Rose Garden, um, the Chalmers Street Park that I mentioned earlier, uh, which is more of a green space. Um, Basilis Garden next to the library was previously included in this. Lamar, Lamar Road. Lamar Highway um, near Fast Track. There's an, another large area green space that's uh, got a welcome sign. It's got roses and the garden club keeps adding stuff and it looks beautiful. Um, in front of Washington Street, and of course, we're also looking at other areas on some of the ancillary side, the entrances to town um, to add some kind of signage and things like that. Um, old Florence Road, for example, we've got one of the old Welcome to Darlington signs repurposed and repainted and put it there at Old Florence Highway. I'm sure that they may want to at some point put some trees there or um, some sort of planting because the housing authority is on board with um, keeping it watered and um, in good repair. Uh, but those are just some of the areas. Um, there are walkways uh, between, to connect the parking lots in downtown that are behind the buildings. So behind the Carolina Bank Plaza building, um, there is a walkway that goes next to Vaughn Insurance. We've got an archway that says Darlington. We've got flowers and benches, the benches around the square, the pots around the square. Um, those kinds of things are what we, this person, the beautification person handles. Um, as far as uh, this breakdown of uh, supplies, we usually use around $3,700 to $4,000 on mulch, pine straw mulch. We're trying to start converting over to all mulch so we don't have to spend as much on pine straw. Um, repairing equipment, tools, soil, fertilizer, plants, just miscellaneous um, supplies, you know, um, drill bits, wasp spray, ant killer, ryegrass seed, uh, random kind of stuff like that, that has anything to do with any of those beautification of those areas. Trimming and plant, planting trees, 273. Um, we're a little bit over. And we um, always kind of have to guess on this one, how many storms we're gonna get. Um, sometimes we get by, last year we actually got by pretty well. We only had two storms. Um, that cost us about $4,000 um, for the damage that was done. And, but we had six large oak trees that had to be removed and that ran about $12,000. So those are some of the ways that we end up getting over on that line item. Um, obviously if there's a hazard tree limb hanging over the sidewalk, we've got to get it cut down. Um, we don't have a bucket truck or anything like that. So we do have to contract that out. Um, we typically use trees are us or Hulk tree service, um, mainly because Hulk tree service comes. If I pick up the phone tonight, they'll come in the morning or tonight. Um, and sometimes that's what we need, um, to clear a road or to, uh, fix the situation. Uh, next year, uh, I suspect, uh, you know, our maintenance as far as trimming and things like that uh, is probably be around 8,000, probably 5,000 for removals. I'm going to put in 1,000 for a stump grinder. There's several places um, in town on Spring Street and various other places where we've cut down trees or trees have broken and fallen and there's just a stump left. Um, if Duke Energy uh, partners with us, Duke Energy will trim trees that are associated next to a power line. Um, they'll remove trees that are problems if they're next to a power line, but they won't take the stump. So that's an added cost um, for us to get that out of the ground. Um, and of course, 
um, planning on planting trees, a thousand dollars, tree diapers, a thousand dollars to go with that. And those are the um, things that go around the base to keep them watered. So you don't have to water them every day. Um, you can water them every two or three weeks if it's hot, uh, once a month if it's uh, a sort of rainy season. Um, and then I've got $4,000 in there for hazard cleanup. Now we do have to move and replace all the Bradford pears in town. Um, we've slowly been, you know, doing five or 10 of them at a time um, because there was 200 to start with. Now we're down to about 87. So um, that's just one of the things that we're um, tackling uh, piece by piece. Um, if you look down Cashua Street, you remember the tree board several years ago, they um, took out with the help of Duke Energy um, so that we could get the sidewalk repaired too with DOT um, on Cashua between the bridge and I think it was Worley or McCall, there was probably 30 trees that got taken down and we replaced them with uh, about 15 or 16 trees that we had permission from property owners um, to put on their property um, so that we maintain that tree canopy, um, which improves property values, which is something we definitely need to do. Any question about trees? Um, 273.1 beautification. This is before we had a um, maintenance person in the beautification department. This is the company that just kind of, we ordered pine straw from for the, the gateway entrances. And so we don't use that any longer. So that's what that is. 273.2 um, historic commission, um, just like the other, the planning commission, historic commission has to have um, it's supposed to be kept up to training. Um, there's a state conference every April, which of course was canceled thanks to COVID-19, um, which is why we didn't spend it. We typically spend um, three or four uh, members and it's a fairly cheap conference and it's in Columbia. So it's not in any kind of hotel or anything like that what we've got to deal with. Beautification board, 273.3. This is the dollars that the beautification board itself directs. So um, when the beautification board gets together, this is kind of the money they um, direct where, what projects they want it to go to. Um, this year, they did the fall scene. Uh, they did cleanup day. They did a grab a bag SC litter cleanup um, in November, which the Lieutenant Governor had started that as a, um, way to get people encouraged to pick up litter and things like that. Um, on a related note to that, we will be getting five free trash cans from Palmetto Pride for our involvement in that, in that um, program. Um, even though we didn't have a ton of uh, people out there, um, we, you know, we did it not knowing that we would get anything from it. Um, we actually had six or eight people that showed up that day and it was cold and windy and rainy and they picked up 300 pounds of trash off the street, so, which was awesome. Um, any kind of decorations that are added, um, they put garland and stuff around the welcome to Darlington signs, lights. Um, they've added a bird bath at Wells Park um, near the, across from Nick's. Uh, and we're gonna be kind of rearranging that a little bit, moving the picnic tables so that there's some more seating. So if you, Eight at Nick's, you could go across and sit at the park meet. Um, the wayfinding sign that got taken out on South Main Street was paid for through this um, and any kind of like irrigation um, spraying, stuff like that. Some of that gets thrown through here. Next year, I suspect, based on what the board was uh, surveyed, they will want to do a, an announcement center at City Hall rather than having those two posts that are um, on the one side that kind of, they're not painted, they're nothing, they're just wood posts that people put the banners. Um, they want to build something nice to, to hang banners on and require people to have a certain size banner. Um, so that way it doesn't look, um, it's not falling down and things like that are torn. Um, they want to, 
put some more plants in that cashable walkway. Um, if you walk down there um, this week, they just refreshed the um, flowers. So um, you might wanna take a stroll. Uh, and 52 bypass in front of the Chevrolet place. We've kind of redone some of the planting in front of Carolina Bank and Verizon added, thanks to Carolina Bank, that bed of roses um, to add some color. Um, on the flagpole side, it's uh, just greenery and some of the plants are have aged out and need to be replaced. Um, that is one of the projects that the beautification board was interested in. Um, and of course, cleanup day, which we usually spend 800 to a thousand dollars for each cleanup day, because you're talking about all that pine straw and flowers and plants and paint and supplies that the volunteers use. All right, um, 279 other operating expenses. Uh, I looked this up because I, I didn't realize that this was, I didn't have $600 down in my notes um, as for far as what that was. Um, this is copies of keys, um, hooks, random small things. Um, also, there was a, a miss, uh, a Bristow oil gas bill that got put on here by mistake. That's how it got to $600 because it was $153. And uh, I believe asset technology, $199.80. And that was to set all this up. All right, Lisa, real quick question. On the beautification board, uh, 273.3 for the $7,000. Yes. Is it possible that... Uh, like uh, 221 and 226, where you've got 220, $225 or $25 that wasn't spent last year. Is it possible to move any of that to allow the beautification board to have more funds to work with because they do a wonderful job? Uh, that's our question. Certainly. Is that something that has to be voted on or something that you can do or? Uh, no, we can, uh, we can, we can move that, um, be, be glad to. Okay. Let's say it again. What is it that you're proposing? I, I'm asking that on number, uh, 221 where it says telephone, $125, 226 for maintenance and service contract, $2,500. I didn't spend any of that, if that would be possible to add that over to 273.3, so the beautification board would have more funds to work with. It's, they oh, do, a wonderful, they oh. do a wonderful job. It's very visual what they do. And right. Okay. Okay. Just, just shift that over to give them more. All right. So um, they'll be happy to hear that. <laughs> uh, they they have big plans and in, in, in the like sixty thousand dollar range. So. Uh, as you All saw right. with their annual plan of things that they want to do. Um, so I'm sure that they will put that money to good use. Um, so right. you can see our total operating expenses, we were under budget a little bit and um, we're expecting to be right around that same number. As far as capital outlay, um, furniture and fixtures, we really didn't need anything. So, you know, we bought a podium um, for the meetings. Um, office machines and the Carnegie Library here, this three not 389. Um, this expense here um, is replacing the roof. Oh now this also this this money was given to us. Um, Miss um, Bet Phillips, who passed away um, and famously donated four million dollars to the Historic Commission also donated $50,000 to the Carnegie Library. And so with that money, we replaced the roof to make sure that um, it is still a usable building. And so that's why that's not accounted for in our original, because we didn't know we were getting that money. So the grand total, your 227,166 is what we had planned to spend. We spent 241,760 which is only 14,000 over, which, you know, when you spend 20,000 on a roof for Carnegie and we still were over on trees, it's pretty good that we're um, right in that ballpark. Um, and we expect that we'll, our expenses next year will be 225, 341. 
Howard, is there any word on the on the library? No library? That you can share tonight um, or yes, sir. We are working with the county on a possible deal on that. Um, I don't know if they're ready to have anything formal yet, but we certainly could uh, discuss it when we have a face-to-face -face executive session. I have um, shown that building to every investor that comes to town. Um, anybody who's even slightly interested, I try and show it to because we own that building and we will own it for several years to come. We cannot sell it for 50 years unless we were to repay um, hundreds of thousands of dollars to the federal and state governments. Um, we can lease it to somebody, um, but we can't sell it at this point. Um, but the improvements that we have put into the building have saved the building um, from further deterioration. We took out the asbestos, you got a new roof, you got a French drain around it, so there's not water coming in. Um, so we've done those things to, to preserve it in a state that it, once we get some kind of investment, we can move that into a usable um, facility. And of course, if the county does not work out uh, for whatever reason, they don't seem to work want to deal with the Carnegie Library. Um, we do have an interested party in, in the upstate um, pre-COVID-19. Um, that was one of the buildings that they were very interested in. And I would hope that, um, you know, that's one that we could revisit um, at, at some point. Any other questions? No, let's go. Let's move on. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. All I right. Believe, I believe the police department is next, the Chief Kelvin Washington. Good afternoon, uh, Mayor Boyd, members of council, Madam Clerk, uh, Mr. Garland, our city manager. Um, I'll try to move through this as quickly as possible because I know we've been going uh, for about an hour and a half now. Um, police yeah. 600 uh, salaries, uh, we're slightly over in our salaries uh, line item. A lot of that has to do with the special uh, projects that we do on the weekends, um, runs, um, different um, um, things that they have downtown at the square, uh, any kind of function that requires uh, extra security, uh, we have to do those. It also uh, includes um, where we've been short, we've had to bring people in and pay them a time and a half. And so there, we're paying a little more uh, than the regular rate. Um, insurance and bonds, we're good there. Um, uh, we'll stop you there for just a second, sir, if you will. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, kind of like with the water department, is, is we'll ask for a breakdown on that, but again, is that, do you think that the extra money that you're paying by bringing other ones in, could we possibly, I mean, me and you have talked about this, trying to get it to where officers are making more money um, to where we can keep the officers uh, stable here, along with better insurance for them. Uh, do you think that there's there's a good strong possibility that that would work out, to where if we were able to look at raising their, their fees, to keep them there? Uh, Mayor, uh, in all honesty, that's a possibility. Uh, I would hate to tell you that yes, raising the salaries would be able to keep officers here. Their oh, agencies, no. yeah. right. their agencies that make. Um, that offer their personnel uh, much more money um, than we make here, and they're having the same problem. Um, so I, I would hate to say that, but that would definitely, I believe that would definitely help, sir. Yes. Um, anyone else on that before I move forward? All right, toward insurance. Uh, not sure Mr. Howard, uh, Mr. Garland would have to explain that. Uh, workman's comp workers' compensation is pretty much self-explanatory. So is the retirement fund. Now, as you can tell, the retirement fund is slightly higher um, with the estimated expenditures versus what was adopted by council. A lot of that has to do with the more uh, money that the personnel makes, the the higher the percentage is uh, of overtime. Of excuse me, of uh, that goes towards their retirement. Same with the social security. Uh, moving on down to 
printing and office supplies. We are slightly uh, over uh, with printing and office supplies. Normally, uh, we're pretty much right on target with that, but this year uh, we, we ran a little bit over, but as you can tell right under it with postage, we're actually uh, under. Um, same with membership dues, training, uh, we're actually uh, under. COVID-19, um, um, pretty much for this, uh, just about the uh, second part of the fiscal year, pretty much wiped out a lot of our um, travel and training. So we did, uh, we had some monies left over in the travel and training budget. Um, I doubt very seriously if we will be doing um, uh, very much uh, travel or training between now and July 1 when the new fiscal year starts. Um, auto operating expenses were pretty much, we should be on target with that. Um, telephone, we're under. Maintenance and service contract um, has been a, um, an issue uh, for us. Uh, we've got quite a few things coming out of that line item. I spoke with Mr. Garland earlier. Uh, we, he and I will probably, it, we definitely will be meeting discussing maintenance and service contracts. We've got quite a few things, um, members of council coming out of that particular line item. Um, our uh, maintenance contract for our body worn cameras, which is held by Axon, uh, Palmetto 800, which is Motorola, which is our radio maintenance contract, our asset technology group, which is our um, computer folks, uh, Xerox um, copiers contract, uh, Nicholson, who handles our software contract, our maintenance for SLED NCIC system, uh, which is Datamax. Uh, we also take um, our um, cable, our internet um, uh, out of that as well. Radio repairs, um, quite a few other things. Um, our maintenance on the postage machine, cu custom signals, who does our radar guns. Um, again, quite a few things. Uh, if there are any uh, repairs, um, they come out of that um, line item as well. So we're, we're going to um, be talking with uh, Mr. Garland um, and, and taking another look at that uh, particular line item. Chief, can I, this is Howard. Um, yes, can I ask you a question on 220? How did we go from 4,000 projected to no use to 4,000 projected again for no electricity, idea. water, and gas? I have no earthly idea, sir. I don't handle that particular bill. Those, uh, I think what Mr. Garland does is he splits those bills among all of the departments is what I'm assuming. So I have no idea what our portion is, sir. I'm sorry. Howard, is that pretty much what you're doing? Is just separating it out? That, that had been the case. I believe it may have been rolled together in another line item. So are we duplicating numbers or are we not accounting for numbers? We, we, we could roll, I'm sorry, somebody's texting. Um, we could roll that in uh, to number, geez, sorry, to 226 if you wanted to. And I think it's just a, a matter of um, accounting for it in either 570 or 580. Okay, I just wanna make sure we're not counting it twice or not counting it at all. That's, that's my, my concern. Okay, thank you. Anyone else before I move forward? All right, um, there's nothing there for 227, 231, nothing. Uh, hardware and building material, nothing. Radio supplies, um, uh, we uh, moved a little bit of money around, as you can tell, between the radio supplies and uniforms. We uh, took a little bit of money out of our uniform line item and created a radio supplies um, uh, line item for us. Um, those batteries uh, for our portable radios are extremely expensive. Uh, in fact, if we've got to replace one of those portable radios, it's about um, 2000 to 2500 And as I said earlier, a lot of that was coming out of that 226 line item. So that's going to be a little bit of relief off that 226 line item uh, with that $4,000. Um, uniforms, um, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Um, uh, the officer's uniforms as well as uh, the uh, clothing allowances for the folks um, who um, have to purchase a business attire um, for, um, for our plainclothes personnel, uh, as well as our narcotics personnel. Um, 
Any questions about those line items before we move on to the next page? Okay, thank you. Um, physicals or annual physicals for the officers. And at this point, we have spent um, about $3,500. I think we've got a few other people that have not gone and uh, gotten their physicals. Um, they should be, they will be going uh, between now and July 1. Um, vehicle insurance um, has increased a little bit because we've uh, added a few other vehicles into the fleet. Um, building insurance, um, that's a uh, Howard Garland question there, if there, are any, if there are any questions about that. Um, awards, um, let me double check on awards. I'm thinking that we may have, um, I don't have it in front of me. I thought I, I thought we had spent um, some out of that particular line item, um, but uh, with four hundred dollars there, um, different awards during the year we um, um, give personnel. Other operating expenses, um, ten thousand um, dollars. I know that we have spent um, more um, than that out of there. Um, I'm, again, as Mr. Garland indicated earlier, these are projected expenses. Um, so these expenses um, are slightly off. Um, so I know that um, we have um, we spent more than that out of that. The other operating expenses um, is kind of is kind of a catch-all. Um, we use that line item for um, expenses that are not budgeted, um, things that come up during the year that were unexpected. And we use that line item to kind of catch those things. Any, any uh, questions about that before I move on to juvenile expenses? Yes, sir. On uh, like physicals on uh, number 250. Yes, sir. Is that, is that done? It, at one time it was done locally in, in the city. Is it still done locally now or was it? Yes, sir. And, and that was one of the reasons why it was done late because there was some discussion at one point we were considering I'm using another vendor, but we decided to, to remain with the local vendor because we were looking at some other options. Um, 281 is juvenile expenses. Um, that uh, particular line item is always uh, difficult to, to, um, to, pr to project. Um, juvenile expenses is where, um, is the line item that we use to pay for the detention of juvenile um, defendants. Um, as you can tell, this fiscal year, we had quite a few days. Uh, the the um, South Carolina Department of Juvenile Justice charges $50 per night um, per juvenile uh, for them to uh, house those juveniles while they're waiting um, um, to be, um, uh, while their fate is, uh, we're waiting for their fate to be determined. Um, we only budgeted 3,000 because the previous fiscal year, I think we spent a little bit less um, than 3,000. Again, it's, it's hard to say, you know, we've got uh, $4,000 in there for next fiscal year. We might spend 1,000, we might spend 7,000. It's hard to say, it all depends on um, our juvenile crime and, and how things go and also the judges. Um, uh, there are some judges that are a little tougher than others. And if they determine that they want to detain those juveniles, then those numbers are going to be a little higher. Um, we've, we had a couple of juveniles this past year that gave us um, some trouble. And so we asked um, the solicitor's office and the family court judges um, to detain those individuals. And that's the reason why we, we ran over as much as we did in that particular line out. Any questions about that before we move forward? Um, radio uh, dispatchers is that's the uh, money um, that we pay um, the county um, to handle our um, E911 di dispatch service. Um, our total 328, uh, 413 is what we were budgeted. Uh, we spent 337, 500, which is is uh, in my opinion is although it's over and I don't like to be over on my budget. Um, most of that, a lot of that came out of that one. Um, line item, um, the 
machines, the, the maintenance and service contracts. And again, I'll be meeting with Mr. Garland this week to take a look at that a particular line item to see what we can do um, to um, do a better job of that. Um, furniture and fixtures, we did not spend any money out of that. Uh, office machines either. Um, uh, debt retirement, debt retirement um, is uh, payments on police vehicles. Um, there were some vehicles that um, um, were purchased prior to me getting here. The debt has been um, settled on those vehicles. Okay. Um, so we do not owe anything on those vehicles. Um, the only money that we will owe on vehicles uh, will be the new vehicles that we've got the uh, $50,000 grant from uh, um, USDA for. And I believe we're only going to have to finance about $65,000 um, to add to that 50. But those vehicles will be ready to go. Uh, we won't have to do anything to them except just you know put the officers in them. Um, any questions about debt retirement? Keith, any idea when those vehicles could be delivered? Is, is USDA giving any guidance on that? Um, no, sir. USDA is actually ready to go. Uh, to be totally honest with you, uh, Mr. Garland, I'm the holdup. Um, we um, are waiting. I'm supposed to call the gentleman back next week with Dodge. We're waiting to see if um, there will be a few chargers for us to get. Otherwise, we will have to go with SUVs. And the SUVs are, I think, about three or four thousand dollars more per vehicle. But that may be the only vehicle that we'll be able to get. So I'm kind of holding out to see if we can pick up a couple of chargers since our order is, is so small compared to a lot of the larger agencies. Um, the gentleman advised me that quite a few agencies, because of um, everything that went on with COVID-19, um, canceled their charger orders and went ahead on and upgraded and got the SUVs. So he feels, he, he seems to think that there may be a few charges left over and we'll be able to pick up three of them, which would be great for us. Chief, it seems like you were saying a year or so ago that you were having problems with the charges not holding up as well as some other vehicles. Would it be, if that's still the case, would it be good to go back with charges or do we need to go with the SUVs? Well, sir, you're absolutely correct, but there were two versions of the chargers. The ones that were purchased um, before were V6s. Um, the ones that we're considering purchasing are V8s. In the V6 models, um, the air intake was very low to the ground. I think it was like maybe six to eight inches off the ground. And you know, we do get a lot of flooding here. And um, the V8, the air intake is, uh, slight, is quite a bit higher. So we won't have that problem. The um, suspensions on the V6s um, were also, for whatever reason, um, not that well built either. Quite a few people had problems with the V6s, but um, nowhere near as many complaints with the V8s. Now, all the uh, chief is all the vehicles we own them now, or are we leasing any vehicles? Or? Well, I, we do have the. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you so much for reminding me of that. We do have the three um, lease vehicles. Um, from um, three, four, five Enterprise. lease vehicles, excuse me, five. From Enterprise? From Enterprise, yes. And, and we're paying, trying to get those paid off as quickly as we can. So I, I stand corrected, corrected, please accept my apologies. We, we do have um, um, a few vehicles that we do. Um, oh, uh, it's coming out better to go ahead and purchase, purchase the vehicles or lease them, or which one was better? Initially, um, myself and Mr. Garland thought that it would be better uh, to lease Mayor Boyd, but we've. To, I, I think it's it, it's good, it's going to be better to purchase. Um, when we really really looked into this lease, um, where they get you at is in year four or five, um, because the lease payments keep going up. Um, the other thing is, if you damage one of those vehicles, um, the resale price goes down. And all of that is figured into the prices that they give you. Um, I think over the years, quite a few agencies are going to regret this, um, this the lease project. And, and so we did one year and, and we, did, we decided we were not going to continue with it, but we kept the vehicles and we're just paying for the vehicles. Uh, okay. Well, Chief Washington's been nice. We had some problems with that company. They We would pay our... Uh, our monthly lease on those vehicles and they would call and ask us why we hadn't paid the bill and they did that for five months straight 
even though we showed them proof of uh, canceled checks where we paid the bill, seems like the right hand didn't know what the left hand was doing. We got uh, tired of dealing with uh, their uh, bill collection folks and we didn't know them anything. So we, that's one of the reasons we also cut the relationship with that company. Mr. Garland so eloquently put it, yes, I'm being nice. <laughs> but again, I think that it's better. Um, it's always better to purchase. Because um, okay. the, the, these the, the way they do this lease and, and, and it's, it's by the fourth or fifth year, your payments are extremely high. Yes. Um, traffic control equipment. Um, that's, um, I wish we would just put cones because that's exactly what, it's traffic cones and also some of the traffic and control equipment that we um, give our um, crossing guards as well. Oh, all right. Um, page 27. Okay. And that is pretty much it. Is uh, anyone have any questions? Let's move on. It's time to move on. <laughs> I think we can move on, but I would like to make a note of, of working on uh, finding more money for the officers. Yes, sir. You, um, yeah. Mr. Mayor Boyd and I have had a couple of conversations about that, and um, we'll be uh, working very diligently on that. Um, for, both, for both fire and for both police and fire. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. And I appreciate uh, serving the city of uh, Darlington. Thank you all for giving me the opportunity um, to serve as a public safety director here. It is truly a blessing. Um, the men and women of the police and fire department are, are exceptional people. And I am blessed to uh, serve with people of that caliber. Again, I want to thank you all for giving me this opportunity. Does this, does this, part, does this part cover the public safety part also? Or? Which, just, which part? Is this the police department? Just... Yes, sir. This is just the layout of. Um... I know you serve as you serve as public safety director also. So is there? Yes, separately? sir. Would yes, be, sir. Would that be brought up separately or? No, sir. Um, I, I I'll only do the police budget. Um, Chief Kavanaugh is going to do the fire budget. I mean, as far as public safety director, where where does that fall? Um, that puts me in charge of both the police and fire departments. Um, because we had, I mean, we had had a discussion before about uh, the buildings being inspected, and so I'm trying to find out who I sh who should I still question about that that they are still the, not Okay, as far as the buildings being inspected, inspected, um, the fire inspections are done by the fire department, but any other building inspections would be done by the codes enforcement officer. And that does not fall up under me. But the fire inspections, they do fall up under me. Yes, sir. Um, Chief Kavanaugh and I have met and discussed the fire inspections. And as soon as um, things clear up a little bit more with COVID-19, um, they're going to be a lot more regularly um, accessible um, uh, than before as it relates to the fire inspection. Fire inspection. I'm sorry, sir. I just like for me to note that I had spoke with Howard and you both about it. That, um, yes, sir. That not, and it's not just you, but it's from years, years back um, that our city has not inspected buildings as far as fire codes. Um, and, you know, I, I won't relate into rumor because it's all rumor, but I know as a personal business owner uh, with locations in different places. Our, ours have never been inspected where they have been in my other, in Florence and Hartsville areas, Venezuela areas are inspected on, on a yearly basis. Um, then uh, as I spoke with you before about tearing that warehouse down uh, on Broad Street, um, that, that should have never been uh, left that way. And it should have been um, before you got here even, you know, that, that should have even yes, been, been tackled and it wasn't. And so how many more buildings do we have like that is what I've asked before. Yes, uh, sir. That are, are public safety um, for, you know, for our city and for our police officers and fire department all to go run into and, and all of a sudden there's a fire and we'll, we'll 
person in there, so like they go and take them out, and it's, you know, it's just major. I don't know if I'm, I'm assuming it's going to cost us more on insurance and things like that too, but I don't know if they could help us with that or not. But I just really like that. I brought that up a number of times. Really like that to be a, be addressed. Yes, sir. Um, and again, Chief Kavanaugh and I, Chief Kavanaugh and I spoke. Um, I think it was last month, and he'll be able um, to 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 elaborate a little more on it in his presentation, um, where we are um, considering a some sort of uh, schedule or some sort of plan where there are so many um, building slash fire inspections done per week or within a time period, and and so is that everyone will be checked at least once a year. And I publicly want to tell you thank you too. So I sent you a text, but while we're everybody can see it, for uh, doing the uh, inspection for as uh, the police coming by and inspecting the buildings, leaving the yes notes. sir, Thanks yes sir, thank, thank you. you. I know it's a lot yes, of extra sir. work, a lot of extra work, but uh, uh, all that all that together could help save us money and save our lives, and also saving on the juveniles and uh, absolutely. That you're spending more spending money on and. Thanks all that by just checking the buildings, make sure that we're all, all our businesses are secure. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all again. I believe Pat Kavanaugh is up next with the fire department. Yeah, good evening, Mayor and Council. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay. I will try to keep this brief. I know we have a lot of things to go over. You have a couple more departments to get through. So I'll just go over some of the areas or some of our concerns that um, Chief Washington and Mr. Garland and I have found. One of our biggest problems, we were over in a couple areas and I'm here to explain why. If you look at the first item on our, on our page 29, it's gonna be the salaries, our projected expenditures um, versus what we had adopted by council. I had a couple things coming on. We did not expect some people being out and a lot of vacations being done and Special events. Normally, special events sometimes, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Garland, come out of hospitality tax. So that made, with the vacations, people being out, that made an overage in our annual salaries. In 2012, we had approximately six to eight part time people that if we had someone out, we could call someone in. Um, and that was okay. Right now, we have nobody on a part-time basis. We're trying to address this issue. I've got a plan in place to Mr. Washington and Mr. Garland that will save us. So whenever someone's out, instead of paying time and a half, we will do a basic flat rate, which should help us on that one. So hopefully, if the deal works out, we can address that problem. Um, now, what I can do, get down here, is there something special you guys want to look at? Because I know it's going to be a long night. Um, I'll just touch on the big things. If we go on down, you'll see our next big issue is number 217, auto operating expenses. The big story with that is this, our business is responding to emergencies. I can't tell you if it's gonna be a slow year or a big year. I can't tell you if a fire truck is gonna break and a fire truck is not. I can tell you that fire trucks are a little more expensive to repair than a basic car. If you take your car to the local Chevrolet place to get the oil changed, you're gonna spend $50 to $60. A service on a fire truck can run up to $1,000 for an oil change. And depending on the mileage we put on is the frequency that has to be done. And um, we also have federal regulations that tell us what we have to do on these pieces of equipment. So if we have an accident, they can't go back on us and say, hey, your brakes were bad or the power steering was bad. So that's gonna accumulate for some of our overages. We had a little rough year with some of the equipment. Yeah, I, I don't. This is Howard. I don't. I don't believe anybody's going to question an operating expense like that if it's something that's going to maintain the safety of the vehicle for you know the vehicle sake itself and for the the folks who are working with you. So, thank you for the explanation. But you know, when you're talking about this amount of money and you know the requirements and the and what you need, I don't think you're going to get any argument that that's something that you have to do. Well, it is what it is. Okay. The next item down there is going to be item 226. That's going to be our maintenance and service contracts. Problem we've got with that is we have different things coming online all the time, things we're supposed to do. Um, we had to sign on to the Palmetto 800 system, which is Motorola, to maintain our mutual aid contract with the state. 
So that one small item has to cover our PD communications for our VHS system. There's an annual contract we have to pay for that. It covers our Palmet 800 system. It covers our Xerox for our copies, our Nicholson software, which we do our fire track and all our NIFRS. Um, it covers Asset Technology Group, our new um, internet technology folks. And it also covers something we have e-dispatch, which is something we use to all the firefighter cell phones if there's a down in, down in the system where the paging system goes out, cell phones turn into a pager. So all that amounts to more than we had originally budgeted. So that's why we have an over increase in that. And we're hopefully next year we can adjust it up a little bit to cover some of that. Um, also looking down, you'll see two items that I want to bring to your attention. One is 237, which is radio supplies. And the other one is... 390, radio and equipment. These things are done this way. Radio supplies, if we need a battery, that's what that's gonna be for. If we need a microphone, that's what's gonna be for. If we have to purchase a radio, that's what we do with the 390. What you don't see is if something breaks. Um, we have a bad fire, a fireman breaks a radio, we have nowhere to take that out of. So resort all that back to 279 and other areas that we don't have to. That'll bring us to our 279, things like that which is on the next page, page 30. Mm. Other operating expenses. Radios break at a fire, fire hoses go down, something breaks on a truck, a piece of equipment that's not covered under everything. That's where you'll see that line item go up. And we had a kind of a rough year this year. Um, some years we don't have many fires, it's down. Other years we have pretty decent fires or bad fires, things happen. So that's the line item we take it out and that's why our 279 is gonna be over. We're going to hopefully adjust it up a little bit next year and cross our fingers and hope nothing major happens. Any questions so far? All right, moving down to 385. That's going to be another item you're going to see. It's going to be overage a little bit. And let me explain this one. 385 is what we use for general goods. And we also have in 385 something called FEMA grants, which we apply for federal funding. Over the past, since I've been here, we have received probably over half a million dollars in FEMA equipment. When we do this, the way it works is FEMA allocates the money after we purchase. It is a, correct me if I'm wrong, Howard, a 5% match, correct? So this year we received a twenty-five dollars to $26,000 FEMA grant. And the way that works is we pay the bill up front and FEMA reimburses us. So FEMA reimburses us back. We don't actually get to see the credit on the line item budget. That's why you're gonna see an overage in that account. The actual amount we spent was 5% of that, which is about 1250 to $1,300. So that's why that line item looks a little bit high, but um, the city gets the money reimbursed back from FEMA. The FEMA and grants are a good deal for us, as, as Pat said. I think we've gotten a half dozen of them over the years yeah. and they're all 95, five grants. So it's hard to beat that type of deal for, for your fire department. All right, moving down the line. You have any questions so far? Okay, the last one I wanna bring your attention to is gonna be 389. That's gonna be our medical supplies. That's the account we use when we run first responder medical calls. Uh, we started first responder medical calls back in 2012 because there's some issues getting help for people. Ambulances seem to be slower. There's not enough in the county. So we stepped up and started a first responder program. Based on the amount of calls you receive every year and the type of calls, we can't judge how much equipment we're gonna use. And also this year we got hit with the COVID. So once the COVID started, I got together with Chief Washington and Mr. Garland, and we started to squirrel back and pack rat some supplies for us. So that's why you're gonna see an overage in that line item. Uh, however, I do know Chief Washington has working with Mr. Garland on some reimbursements from the federal government. So that's gonna be our big kicker there. Um, good Lord willing, we'll get some of that stuff back when the federal government reimburses us. So Chief, can you tell me what 271 is? Sure. What does that cover? Special department supplies. That's something, if I don't have nowhere to put it, um, like for instance, uh, four or five times a year, I host a quarterly fire marshal training for the state. And what I do is I bring fire marshals in from all over the state. That way the few fire marshals that I have here, we don't have to send them out and pay for motel rooms and travel expenses. So we bring them in, we feed them. 
Um, when we host fire academy classes, we'll feed people here. That's what that light on there is. If something we don't have, they have no other budget to put it in, that's what we use it for. And it may be chainsaws. There's no real line on them for chainsaws, chains after a storm, um, weed eaters for cutting grass around the station, lawnmowers, things like that. Thank you. You're welcome. Folks, do we have any other questions? I don't want to keep you guys tied up because I know we got a few more things to go. Chief, I know that, that uh, we talked at another work session about problems you have oh, you can't hear me. at the building, uh, yes. getting in and out of the building. That's not here as a part of the budget, but I'm assuming you're putting information together to help us when we have another work session on some of the long range needs that the fire department has got. Yes, sir. After the council meeting where I spoke to you folks, um, Howard, Chief Washington and I have met, and we realized there's gonna be an issue with the, with the roads out here. Um, we are trying to figure out ways and money to figure out how to get us out of here. That's, it's, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when the next time the street collapses and if we're gonna have damage or if I come to work and like I said before, the building is caved in on one side. But we're working diligently trying to figure out ways to make this work. I can, add, I can add something to that, Ms. Councilman Milling. We're working on a donation of a piece of property um, in Darlington from a company, and we'd like to locate the fire station on that property. Um, we've had several conversations with the uh, or aforementioned company this calendar year, and we would expect a gift, uh, hopefully no later than the end of the calendar year. And then it's a matter of... Uh, coming up with the funding for a new building. That would be sometime in 2021 or 2022. There is a community development block grant, CDBG grants available for fire stations. So we would be probably pursuing that if we were able to follow through on the uh, gift of the property from a, a company in the city of Durham. Thank you. Uh, I got a question for Kevin. Kevin? Yes, sir. Is there a, uh, without using the S word, Sue, is there <laughs> a, a legal matter that we could take against the state for knowingly, knowingly uh, leaving that road the way it is, not just for the fire department, but for, for anybody that goes by there, knowingly uh, preparing a road uh, in a dangerous form and not properly I mean, the road that we're talking about building, doing Broad Street, they're saying that we're going to have to pack the dirt by every six inch, 12 inches, and yada, yada, mm -hmm. yada. Okay. Right. Yet, uh, the one on Broad Street, I have video of the guys down there with the road sign, placing the road sign, a piece of material over top of a broken line, uh, knowingly that it's not going to hold. There should be some legal ramification for that. I mean, yeah, simply speaking, someone does a job negligently and that leads to damages, then you can sue. Um, and, and, and as complicated as us lawyers like to make things, that, that's really all that a lawsuit is about. Someone does something negligently and it causes damages. Um, so if they did not do their job in, in a way uh, that they're supposed to and we can prove that it's negligent, then yes, I would assume there's something. With the caveat being that, uh, you know, suing uh municipalities, government, and all that is a totally different set of uh, liability standards than, than it would be for just suing an individual. But uh, simply speaking, yes, if they did something negligence, then we would have some reason. There should be some way that we can hold them accountable to prepare that road the way it should be prepared. When we know right. it's it, a, a constant it, rotation of, you know, sending me, 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 send me and you down there with a shell to fix it, you know, in that system. Right. Right. And they have a certain, you know, uh, again, uh, uh, standards that they have to adhere to. And if they don't, then they're negligent. And, you know, maybe it's something as good as maybe firing off a letter to them and explaining to them our, our, our concerns. And sometimes that uh, a letter from a law firm will get them off the snide, so to speak. So, yeah, but I, I would assume there's some recourse, definitely. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, guys. Well, if you don't have anything else for me, I will uh, let you move on. And I appreciate you taking the time to. Help me present this and listen. Uh, Pat, I yes. know we got to go, but uh, the fire inspections, I'll, I'll question you about that also. Uh, is that something that's done on a normal basis over the past years? 
No, sir. It's been hard getting manpower to do this, and we've been meeting trying to trying to figure a way to have it up. Um, I've met with Chief Washington and also Mr. Garland. We're trying to figure out something to do uh, the best way we can get it done. Okay. And Pat, Pat, on that same subject line, um, I know there's some ordinance restrictions as far as what you're legally allowed to do. I don't know if we could research some of the other surrounding communities who've gotten a little bit more proactive on trying to keep their buildings up to standard or bring them back up to standard. But if we could maybe look into that and if we need to adjust some of our ordinances, please let us know. Okay. Yeah, on that issue, when we go out and we find a violation or a citation, all we do is write up a, a piece of paper. Um, far as legal ramifications, we do not have any. If we have an issue, we mainly contact the police department and they will go ahead and try to write up one of the, one of the ordinances and zones they have. That could be something that we can research and we've thought, talked about before giving the actual fire marshals the authority to write a court summons. Um, but that's, we'll have to research that some more and see what we can get with that. Right, right this moment, if you walk into a, a building and the exit signs aren't working and the um, doors blocked and the fire extinguishers are outdated or they have no fire extinguishers, you can just write them a warning. Is all you're able to do right this moment? Well, we have a couple options. We can run on the warning, give them 30 days. Most of the time, if we walk in, we find a violation. The way we explain it to the owners is try to educate them. And normally they comply with us and work. If they don't, we usually call the police department to come up there and say, look, help us out. We're going to shut the place down. And then we go that way. 99 times out of 100, we don't have that issue. Uh, once we confront the people and try to educate them very nicely and calmly, they pretty much comply. Mayor Boyd, yes. If if I might um, interject, um, but again, and I, I do want to, and uh, again, remind uh, you and and the members of council that Chief Kavanaugh and I have had uh, exhaustive conversations um, about uh, fire inspections, and, and I think that you all will see uh, in the future that we will be doing more uh, fire inspections than what we've done in the past. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, we've hit eight o'clock. Um, we stopped at eight o'clock last night. Do you want to continue on or do you want to uh, adjourn until tomorrow evening? How much, how much more do we have? We've got um, codes enforcement. We have the uh, street and sanitation and stormwater departments. We also have uh, recreation and uh, parks and recreation. Let's go to tomorrow. Help everybody up. I got all that. I don't. I suggest. Uh, so whether you want to do it tonight or tomorrow, you'll be on the other side. Well, I'm, I vote for tomorrow. And so I would, do I. I'm going either way. I would go for tomorrow. I find that after two hours, the ability to process information doesn't work as well as it used to. I would vote tomorrow as well. I'm having tummy issues. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll make a motion to adjourn for tonight. Do we have a motion? I so move. I'll second that. All right. And tomorrow night, we'll everybody in favor for that? Yes. yes. Tomorrow night at six o'clock, Howard? Six o'clock. Uh, six o'clock's fine, yes. Six o'clock, fine with everyone? Yes. 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 Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Everyone, have a good night. Thank you. Good, good night. night. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. Good night. Good night, y'all.